Okay, in this video, we're looking at some more facts about quotient groups. So let's re just recall a subgroup is called normal, and we use this notation if the left coset Gn is equal to the right coset Ng, and that has to be true for all elements from the group. And in the case that you have a normal subgroup, you can form this super important object called the quotient group. So it's given by the set of all left cosets, where the operation is the following. So the coset xn times the coset yn is the coset xyn. Okay, great. So the proposition we want to prove here starts off with that the center of the group is a normal subgroup of the group. And also, if G mod the center, in other words, that quotient group is cyclic, then the group itself is abelian. Okay, so let's start off with the first part. And so let's notice that uh, if we look at the coset G, Z, G, so that's going to be equal to everything G times X, where X runs from all elements from Z, G. But let's recall what the center means. The center is all the elements from the group that commute with every element from the group. So that means this GX is really the same thing as XG for all X in ZG. But now we can pull that G out of the right-hand side, and that's going to be uh, the center uh, with the right coset G. Okay, good. So yes, it is normal. And now the next thing we want to do is let's suppose that G mod ZG is cyclic. So that means it's generated by one element. So let's call that element maybe X, but remember that elements from this are cosets. So maybe we'll call that X ZG. Not to be confused with this, this x up here, which was just kind of a dummy variable inside the set builder notation. This is an actual generator. Okay, so now we're going to use a fact about cosets, and that is they partition the group. So, in other words, we can write uh, G as the union of xn zg as n runs from zero up to infinity. Really, we may not need to go to infinity um, because this might be finite, but just in case we can keep doing that and then it just won't be a disjoint union, but that's okay. So now let's take um, a and b in uh, g and notice that that means that A is in X to the N Z G and B is an element of X to the M Z G and this is for some M and N bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so now we can write this down in terms of what we have above. So this is going to be X to the N Y times X to the M Z Okay, and then given the fact that uh, z that x, that y is in the center, we can bring this x to the m past y, and that's going to give us x to the n plus m times y times z. Okay, and now we can do two things. Notice we can split this up as x to the m times x to the n. And then we can also reverse the order of y and z because they're both in the center. So that's z times y. And then finally, we will move z past x to the n, and we can do that because z is in the center. So this is going to be x to the m z, x to the n y, which notice that's exactly equal to b a. So let's look at the extreme left and the extreme right-hand side of this, and those were arbitrary elements um, from our group, which tells us that if we have arbitrary elements of our group, AB, we have AB equals BA, which is the same thing as saying the group is abelian. Okay, that's a good place to end.